Hello, I'm Grant Goodeve. Welcome to If Walls Could Talk. When Lark and Michael McCarley moved to Lancaster, Pennsylvania in the summer of 2000, they found themselves in an area where many of the other families had lived for several generations. That proved to be a big help when the couple started searching for information on their Victorian mansion. As the McCarleys got to know their neighbors, they realized that their 1882 house had a reputation for its healing properties. Even though we only had 20 minutes, we had a feeling that this was it. Lark and Michael McCarley postponed their flight out of South Central Pennsylvania so they could take a short tour of an 1882 Victorian mansion. What little they could see of the three-story home in that time was enough to convince them to leave their house in Tennessee and move to Lancaster. We went back to Tennessee, we took a few pictures and looked at them, made an offer, and we never saw it again till the day we took possession of the keys. After they purchased the house, the McCarleys spent hours uncovering the treasures they missed on the first brief tour. It was like seeing it for the first time because it had been over three months since we made the offer and we opened the doors and they knew this was our house. Lark and Michael still remember their delight at finding the ornate crown molding, inlaid floors, and old-fashioned bathroom fixtures. But their biggest surprise came in the form of a mysterious machine sitting in the depths of the house. It was our first trip down the stairs. We didn't know what to expect, and we certainly didn't expect to find this, of course. While the label told them it was a gas machine, the McCarleys had no idea what it was used for. When neighbors began to bring housewarming wishes, the couple was enlightened about why the large contraption was in the basement. This is an Elkins and Royal gas maker, and it supplied the gas for the lighting of the house. You turn the crank here to lift the weights, and it kept the pressure up in the house. And as the weights came back down from burning the, the, the gas off, it eventually come down until he hit the floor. You, of course, have to come back down here and crank up the weights again. The home's modern electrical system, which now lights the house, came in handy when the couple spent several late nights updating the home's decor. When Michael began to repair some damaged molding, he wanted more than a cosmetic band-aid. In the barn, he found the perfect material to perform reconstructive surgery. So I had the baseboard material, I had a lot of the trim work. I didn't have to deal with finding old wood. It was here already. I was tickled to death. The McCarleys began to build a picture of the home's previous owner with some of the other items in the barn, like a set of early 1900s riding stirrups and a book on horse medicine. A signature in the front of the 1883 book gave the couple their first hint at who had lived here before. It was signed by Martin Ringwald, and this really started inspiring us to find out who owned the house. When the Ringwald name turned up on an 1875 map of the neighborhood, the McCarleys realized the family owned the home for more than a century. Dr. Martin Ringwald, who was the area's doctor, moved into the home in 1895. Horses were his hobby, which explained the veterinarian medicine book that the couple found earlier. But Lark and Michael learned the doctor's two-legged patients weren't treated in the barn. They were invited into the home. The western parlor was divided into two different rooms. Part of it is an office for his patients to enter instead of coming through the front doors. And the other part of the parlor was used as his examining room for the patients. And we've met neighbors that are probably in their 80s today that remember when they were little children coming to sit in one parlor while their parents were visiting Doc Ringwald in the other parlor. Evidence of how little the home changed became apparent when neighbors remembered the 1860s mirror that was still in the front hall. But Lark sees the changes in medicine reflected in the bottle she found out in the barn. I mean, they're just fascinating because, you know, you know immediately that they're old and you want to know what they are. And especially the label on the one bottle that um, gets into how, pretty much how it will cure anything from arthritis to the common cold. After learning the healing role their home had in the neighborhood, the McCarleys are even more impressed with the house. 
Their only concern is that their wish to find out more of the home's history may be an incurable desire. We're making little discoveries all the time. And things start kind of, you know, fitting together a little bit better. And you start getting the whole history of the, the people that live here. The McCarleys guess that between his medical practice and his horses, Dr. Ringwalt was a busy man. But the couple uncovered evidence that he had time to indulge in at least one other hobby. Michael uncovered the remains of a stamp collection in the barn. Some of the pages were blank, but one page still had 20 stamps on it. Michael and Lark believe the blank pages show that stamp collecting probably took a back seat to his other passions. 